Can you hear me? How about, How about now? now? I wonder if this is working. I'm embarrassed. No sound still? Can't hear me? Oh, you can hear me. All right. That's kind of the problem here is uh, I don't know if stuff is working or not. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate it. I shouldn't have gone on such a long little speech. Let's start this over. Thanks for thanks for coming to hang out, everybody. Life Reason, uh, Javi, Justin, Derek, Rob, Andrew, Brendan, MS, Herb. Appreciate you guys uh, helping me out. And like I said, this is a bit of a learning curve for me. This is the second time I've done this. But we're going to start over. I'm glad you guys are all here. I'm really, really glad, glad you're able, able, able to, to tell, tell me that uh, I wasn't making any noises. Because <laughs> this would have been a really boring, boring video. video. But, but we're going to look at a bunch of the stuff that we're shipping out today. Including some marble shells here that I was trying to mention. Uh, there's something cool about looking at marble shells before they're cut. So I thought it'd be a good chance to take a look at a couple different shells here um, in two different marble colors. And then I also wanted to give another look at the psychedelic shells, which I've been getting a lot of messages about. Uh, people seem to be really interested in that. I was planning to go to interview Skip again about those psychedelic shells because uh, I want to know why he can't do more of them. And maybe that will help a lot of people understand why I can't offer that as a standard offering or even something that we can have special made. But Skip's, I know he's going to try to work on it, but it'd be good to interview him again. I just like hearing Skip talk. Um, but also uh, tomorrow we're going to be taking, this is the last chance we'll get a chance to look at the psychedelic shells before they get cut because tomorrow we have plans to cut that up and make it into some private stock stuff, which I'm really excited about. Really bad echo. How about now? I'm sorry, guys. That is a terrible echo. Sounds like I have two mics. I feel like it might be working now. <laughs> Technology. All right. Man, thanks, guys. Well, let's just get right into it. Enough of me, my face. Let's look at some leather. Let's nerd on some stuff. Let's take a look at these marble chills first. And I'll sort of move you down. All right. I should do a better job looking at the chat. Perfect. Now, thanks, Andrew. Appreciate that, man. All right. Take a look at this. There's something kind of amazing about seeing a marbled shell. And I know we cut one piece here, but the larger context of these shells is really, really interesting. And I think when you cut just a small little section like here, it still looks cool, but there's something amazing about seeing a whole piece together. And I know you can't really use this and do anything with just the shell uh, by itself. But I thought it'd be really cool to show you this. And there's another one here. Take a look at this guy. This has some weird sort of uh, wrinkling to it, which I think this is a reject from Horween. It's like there is no shell right in this section here. It's like they, they went a little too far digging into the leather. So they went past the shell and into more of like the fibers behind it which is unfortunate, but uh, we try to work with them and instead of them throwing this out or, or whatever they would do with it, we just buy for them from them and try to cut around that. Um, there's a little bit of an understanding that we have where they trust us to not cut crap into a uh, wallet and things that we make. So Skip kind of trusts us uh, with like the rejects or like lower grades like this, but that's still a really cool sort of contrast from that orange tone in the bottom there. So it's a little glary. So a little bit more of this forest green on top. I think that's really neat. And bad static and cutting in and out. Oh no. Is anybody else having the static 
I did listen back to the replay of the last one and I heard the static and I don't understand why it's happening. I changed my sample rates and stuff. Uh, and I thought I fixed it. And I was testing a bunch before I turned the camera on. I'm surprised it's not working. Well, let's keep going anyways. Tell me if this is sounding terrible and I'll try to fix it. This is a Color 8 Marble Shell. Take a look at that. It's pretty special. And you can see here, at this section here in the marbling process, this is the part they actually have to hold onto the leather. So we don't tend to get much shaving of that marbled pattern like up in this section but we do have a lot of really cool contrast down here. And the reason we pulled these out, it kind of reminded me when we were looking at the psychedelic shell, which are these two here. Yeah, sorry, it's not sounding great. I'm gonna spend some more time trying to figure this thing out. Um, taking a look here, the psychedelic shell, which is still really, really neat. I recalled seeing some other shells that had sort of similar looks, and that's why we pulled these out. Because on the reverse side of this marbled color eight, it's pretty interesting. So every now and then we get really crazy die marks on the unintended side that the tannery never intended for anybody to see. But we sometimes take a look at these and think something like this would be really neat. So we'll try to cut that into a special section. Although the shell side on this is also really, really cool. Take a look, one more thing. This is not glazed. So it looks a little bright here. Let me bring it down. So it looks a little bit more of like a matte finish on this side compared to the two psychedelic shells that we got last week. And take a look at the difference in the luster here. See how much more of like a wet sort of glossy finish this has. It's really, really bright and shiny. And I'm noticing uh, I had a hard time capturing the luster on things like this, but it's almost like, it looks like a layer of water or something over the surface of it, which is what the glazing will do for you. And here's what the reverse sides of the shell look like um, without any of that. And tell me one more time how the uh, audio is sounding. Is it sort of that crackly sound or is it echoey or anything like that? Or maybe we're good. But anyways, I think that's pretty cool. I wanted to give you one last look at the psychedelic. So this will be the last time we'll be able to see these two shells in their full context. And I think you'll be surprised when we start to cut pattern pieces out of these, how this will sort of transform into something new. They All the leather tends to look a little bit different once you cut out a shape of it, which I always find really interesting. Uh, but this one, I'm really excited to see what it's gonna look like. I'm not sure what we're gonna make out of it yet but um, we're gonna follow our normal sort of private stock procedure and you know make what we think will look cool out of this. So when we get down to cut tomorrow and I'll record all this, we'll start to get a sense of you know what pattern pieces will look neat in certain sections. And let's look at the next one. This one was really neat. That's crazy. Oh, still cracky. All right. Thanks for the feedback, guys. I'm going to work on that. I don't really understand it, um, but this is all new to me. I'll figure it out. <laughs> so bear with me. Sorry about the audio quality, but this is, you probably don't want to hear me talk anyways. Let's just look at this crazy shell. This one I think is maybe a little bit more interesting than that last one. And again, there's something about the huge context that's really really neat and i think once we cut this though you know something like that is going to take on a different different life and then the luster on this guy it's so bright and shiny and has a really great like waxy feel i'm not really sure how they finish this piece but it's uh it's really special so i'm excited to see what this turns into i did want to also mention the marbled side's not so shabby either this kind of looks like it could be a black marbled. It, it looks like it could either be more of like a green marbled or a uh, one of the blue marbleds. So here's a black marbled Capone. We actually made a small batch of these. You can see a little bit of the same sensibilities in the color there, but this one seems to be a little bit more like bluish green, 
which is kind of interesting. But I do, I wanted to mention, we do have a couple of these marbled black Capones left in the small batch. And I actually reduced the price. So if somebody's interested in getting a unique piece, here's a color eight marbled, which I also really like. And then I did the other unique version that we tend to see, the color eight reverse, which you get at least one Horwin ink stamp. This one has three, which is maybe a little bit overkill. But let's move to... Um, Let's see what else is in the shipping boats today, <laughs> if I didn't explain that last time. Uh, we call the, uh, these things boats. Okay, so I actually use shoebox lids. Like this was a, um, for my thousand mile boots <laughs> and we'll, everything that's ready for me to make a video of, we, we put it in something like this that we call a boat. So this is one of two boats. Let's go through all the stuff that we're shipping. Um, maybe we'll start with small and then go to big. Looks like we got some Herbies, Tonys, Foxes, Capones. Uh, and there's some one shots here that I wanted to show you. I kind of want to get these belts a little bit out of the way. Here's the Frank. It turned out really well. More Capones. One shots, more Franks. Yeah, hey, thanks, Andrew. I just got to work on the audio stuff here. That's, I'm sure it's not that pleasant to listen to. I'm sorry, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> All new, I like, it's kind of how I live my life is I just go into the deep end and figure it out, you know, and I'll deal with the consequences. Um, but the hope for me is, you know, the more stuff I try, the more I learn and the better I get at stuff. You know, a year ago I was just starting to do video. And if you go back and look at the old videos, you can, I, I can see how much progress I've made. So we'll, the same thing is gonna happen here. I'm just gonna get better and better. Let's take a look at some of the stuff here. So this is a Horween leather belt. This is a really beautiful piece of natural Chrome XL. And we do a ton of different leathers. And Chrome XL has been around for over a hundred years. So I think sometimes it gets overlooked, but it's, really really nice it has such a great waxy and rich feel it has like a nice subtle luster it's not as mirror like as the shell but you can get a nice sense there of what i'm talking about it's got a subtle sheen to it and on the back sides of these we actually finish in the flesh sides of the leather it's a little bit of a resin finish which i think gives it a little bit cleaner look there's two other things on this belt that i like we finish all the edges with a uh, hand waxing and burnishing. So you also get a nice little luster on the edges. It's a clean look, but definitely doesn't look, you know, like paint. That's very much a natural finish. And then the other thing we do on the belts that I like, I've always liked these sort of teardrop shape holes and these belts are fit to the middle hole. So it, I forget what size this was, but this one that is a 38 is 38 inches from what I call the pin of the buckle where the leather wraps around here to that middle hole is 38 inches. Usually that's about two inches larger than what your jean size is. So this person's jean size is probably more like a 36. Um, but I've always liked these teardrop shaped holes because that's kind of how your belt's going to wear in those holes anyways. We're sort of just expediting that for you. And it's really interesting. I, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a simple device, a belt that just fits through your belt loops and holds your pants up. Um, but I've been surprised when we first started making these, I gave them to a couple friends of mine to try out and give some feedback. And I don't know what belts they were using before. It's probably sort of inexpensive throwaway type of belts. But they mentioned to me that these were really, really comfortable. And that was kind of a shock to me. And I think there's something about the Chrome XL and the Dublin that has a firmness enough to be able to function properly as a belt, but it's also malleable enough to where it will flex around your body. So it's kind of interesting. Like I've been wearing Horween leather belts for 15 years, so I kind of forgot what other belts are like, but uh, these are reportedly the most comfortable belts that my friends have worn. So take that for what it's worth. Yeah, it sounds like a bad connection. I think it's something to do with the sample rate, the bit rate, but I changed all that. So I'm not sure why it's funky. I'll figure, I'll figure something out. Uh, I think what's happening is I'm using the microphone connected to the camera and it needs to be connected right to the computer. 
Uh, let's take a look at a Lexington in ultraviolet shell cordovan. This is one of those more recent color additions from Horween. It's like a vibrant purple shade. So some angles, it's a little bit darker, like color eight, like right there. You could tell me that was color eight and I would believe you. But when you start to turn it, a little bit more of these magenta tones appear. And I think that is really neat. And these key cases are great. You can fit three keys on it. I put it in a front pocket. I find it to be uh, really easy to use. And we also have the vault that holds six key keys in that case. And I like to use that at home, just throw it in a drawer to uh, keep all my house keys and stuff together. And let's move on to some one shots. We've got one, two, three, four, five. These two kind of go together. But these are some one shots that we're sending out today. This one is a really special leather. It's one of those pieces that was a development item for Horween that they're may or may not be able to do again. But this is a calfskin. And I'm not sure what the tannage is. I forget what leather they tan this into. But it's super, super thin. Um, I think most calfskins calf skins are quite thin. About the thickest they go is four ounces. I believe this one feels more like two and a half or three. So it's super thin. And they pressed this um, box board print into it, which is really neat. And the, there's something something pretty special about this particular um, calf skin. This is not the 1940s calf, but it feels really smooth and silky. And there's some that they've done without that texture in it also that I really enjoy. So somebody's got a cool one shot coming their way. And Color 8 Chrome Excel one shot, which again has a little bit more of that subtle luster. It's shiny but not as mirror-like as the shell. And I notice on the Color 8 Chrome XL, the pull-up is a little bit more cherry. Like if you look at the spine there, it's like a little bit more red with a darker surface color. It looks more like a true Color 8. And then here's a black shell, I believe, or is this green? This, this looks like a dark green shell. And it's subtle. We, you've, if you've been following these before, you may have heard me mention that we're moving away from the intense blue shell and we're moving more towards the denim blue shell because it reads more of like a true blue. And the same thing we're gonna try to do with the green. So this dark green kind of looks black, but we're, we have another green shell from Horween that's just called green and it reads more of like a true green. So this is a nice piece going out too. And then these last two, this is, this is something interesting. So these were both sold to us as Amaretto Shell Cordovan and let me crank down the brightness. So these were sold to us as Amaretto, but they're definitely um, different. And this is a good example of some of the color range we tend to see. This is the most dramatic though. So on the left here, this is Amaretto. It looks a little dark and a little red to me. Usually it's not this dark and not this red. And then the other one here is a little light and a little yellow on the far end of that range. And somewhere in the middle of these two is the true amaretto. So I'm putting these up as light amaretto for this one. And I think we're calling this one amaretto. It's slightly on the dark range. But there's a big range in all of the leather from Horween because it's hand finished. And each, uh, each shell is a little bit different too. So we do see a bit of a range. You know, if you're worried about a color, you can always send me an email and I can just send you photos of whatever you're interested in to give you like a per more precise version of what that color is. I, I kind of like both of these, but you know, you might want a little bit more of this darker orangey red one. And some people might like the lighter ones. It kind of, to me, the lighter one kind of encroaches a little bit on the whiskey, but it's slightly more orange than a whiskey shell. All right, let's keep it going. We got a lot, there's a whole nother boat it's a little bit of a smaller boat to look at. Well, look, let's look at some Franks. So this is a black shell, Frank the Enforcer. And I think comparing that to this dark green will give you, a, there you go. So you can really tell the green when you put it next to something that's actually black. But when you look at it on its own, it kind of just reads as a black. That's kind of a good demo right there. The shoemakers want a little bit of a darker color because when they form this around the last, the color tends to lighten up. You get a little bit more of these undertones in the leather. So they do tend to make it a little darker for shoemakers. But here's a true black shell Frank the Enforcer. That's a really clean look. I like the natural edges against the black. I think 
looks really neat. And then again, we wax and burnish all the edges. Our team does a really nice job on these. And kind of, here's a cool English tan one. Let's see, two English tans. So here's here, here's another good example of the range that we tend to see. These are both English tan double and Frank the enforcers. You can see this one, the front panel here is a little bit lighter and a little bit more yellow. It gets a little browner on the top. These will patina really, really well. I like this one a lot. This one's got some really nice grain character in it. Maybe I can show you that. It's got these sort of like, I call it a quilted look. Maybe it won't show. But it's got a really, really neat texture on this piece. I'll give you a look at the back. English and Dublin, it's my favorite. This is about as light of the English Tan Dublin that we see. So sometimes it's a little darker and a little bit more orangey. And here's a natural shell, Frank. That is really cool. I struggle capturing the color of this. See there, it's darker. And then some angles, it's, it's lighter. So it's really interesting how much the color changes depending on what angle you look at it. And that's because the shells have fibers in them that are directional. So they're pointing one direction and whatever angle the light hits against it, it will change the color a bit, kind of like how a suede works. But that's a, that's a really beautiful piece of natural shell. And speaking of natural shell, here's a Capone money clip, also in that natural shell. I've been wearing one of these Capones since we first, um, actually before we started selling them. So I was wearing our first development one. In fact, I'm still wearing it. So here's here's my Capone that I've been really enjoying. Um, but this, I'm just surprised at how much I like the Capone because for, for years and years, I was only wearing a Herbie and I still love the Herbie. But the Capone is serving me really, really well right now. Or my wallet in the back pocket, but these are designed more for like a front pocket wear in mind. Uh, but I'm really happy with this design. And we've got some more new designs coming soon. But that money clip in the center is really really easy to use. I'm surprised how much I like a money clip. Here's the uh, classic color H shell. It's like a dark brown burgundy shade, some angles, just like the natural shell. More uh, purple tones come out and other angles, more brown tones come out. So you might be able to see a little bit more red and purple in that angle and a little bit more like a dark brown in this angle. It's pretty fascinating to see these shells sort of shift in color, depending on how you look at them. So sometimes I'll catch myself just spinning this around and looking at it. Love the Derby leather. So the Derby leather is the same as the Dublin, but it is tumbled. Uh, so you get a little bit more of like a broken up look on the Derby. I really like it too, to be honest. I think it's a great product. Here's another one of those small batch items that we're shipping out. This is a black marbled Capone. I do have it on sale right now. Nice, nice little deal on these if you're looking for a more unique piece. All the marble shells are totally random, and I love the color contrast in this guy. It's a little bit more orange in the bottom right, and it has that stark fade right to the dark forest green color. That's pretty special. Here's a look at the inside. We try to cut these in ways that we think will turn out interesting, just like this, where you got that same sort of fade on the top right, that's pretty cool. And it looks like we've got some Bugs and Tonys coming up. So here's what I was talking about with the blue shell. So this is denim blue, which does read more of like a true blue, as opposed to the intense blue that can kind of be interpreted more as like black. So we've been trying to move everything more towards this denim blue shade, which is really, really nice. Let me give you a look at the inside. This is super special. This is a reverse blue interior, and you get all those random dime marks and the Horween ink stamp. I think this was part of a small batch that we did um, because it's, I don't know. We try to cut them more interesting for the small batch stuff and out of rare shells and stuff. That's, that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the Tonys that are just a slight step up from the Bugs Moran. The big difference is that the Tony the Ant has a bill slot on the back. We also make it a little bit wider to more easily accommodate that cache on the outside of the wallet. But here's that, man, this is a, about as good as it gets for a piece of shell 
the color HL on here is super smooth, bright, shiny. It's like a really rich and smooth feel. Maybe we look at the back. That's pretty nice. We get that same sort of color changing going on to this guy. See, it's a little lighter on this angle and a little darker on this angle. It's pretty cool. Here's a whiskey. Oh, I get excited about whiskey. Here's a whiskey shell Tony also. And these are really nice for a bunch of years when we first started doing wallets. Um, people would come to us for the whiskey shell. I think that was because you basically couldn't get whiskey shell at all. So I don't know. I don't know why that was happening, but we've, Dan and I have always loved this color and we just wanted to make wallets out of it. So we started picking this one up and I think that was our best selling color for a few years, maybe eight and seven years ago. And it's a little bit different than the natural shell. Let's see if I can get a nice comparison here. So here's natural on the Frank. And then this Tony is whiskey. And if I can sort of give them the same light, see how the whiskey is slightly darker and a little bit more golden and yellow when compared to the natural. They're pretty similar at some angles, but the natural is definitely lighter and definitely less golden than the whiskey. But that's a really, really nice tone of the ant here. And I, I polished up this one. I've been really drawn to the black Dublin recently, and this is a remarkable piece. And a lot of people, I don't think people come to us for black wallets. Um, I think it's probably because you can get a black wallet sort of anywhere. But anybody that's shopping for a wallet, not just for me, but anywhere, if you're trying to buy black, I can't suggest the Dublin leather enough. It's, it's just magical. Let me see if I can describe what I see in it. So number one, it has a really smooth appearance. It has like a, it doesn't have a silky feel. It has a really smooth feel in the same way that shell has a smooth feel, but this is full grain. So you can see, you know, that bit of grain character in there, hopefully. It's really, really nice and natural looking, which you don't see on a lot of black leathers. It also has a really great like hand feel. It's firm and soft at the same time, which is really interesting. And then our Johnny the Foxes, we use a horse hide Latigo for the interior that I really like. It keeps the thickness down quite a bit. So if you take a look here, that's the thickness we're talking about. It's pretty thin which is why we had this leather custom made for us by the tannery. We wanted something that was naturally thin, but as strong as possible and then have some nice aging characteristics. So the tannage in this leather is actually called Latigo, which is like an old saddlery type of like Western wear type of leather. So it will age very nicely, it will darken and patina, not in the black so much as, as uh, other colors like mock or the teal, but this is a really neat piece. We, we also sort of stealth it out where all the edges are black, the front's black, the inside's black, all the back sides of the leather are also finished black. I like a stealth out wallet like this. But the Dublin leather should be the star of the show. If you if you haven't experienced any any Dublin or Derby, somebody mentioned Derby, uh, it's really special. I suggest checking it out. Let's take a look at the one Herbie. Oh, there's another Herbie in the other boat. But here's a natural shell fat herbie this one has a really interesting sort of striation on the back here that is really neat and they don't they don't all come like that you can see it's it's smooth it just visually appears textured that's a really cool look i like all the random character on all the leathers but especially when i see it in shell it's a little bit more rare but these natural shells, speaking of things that we've been doing for a long time, this is another wallet that we've been making for a long time that people really have enjoyed. If you look at the homepage of our website, you can see what this looks like on day one and day 1000. It really develops an incredible patina. So the color darkens, gets a little bit more golden, and then the luster develops in layers. So right now it sort of just has this surface luster, which is really bright and shiny. Like I could probably blind you with it if I wanted. But later, once you wear it, it's almost like a leather or a, a, a luster develops from inside of the leather, which is really special. And there's also a nice 
color shift on this guy. Some angles a little light, some angles a little darker. It's pretty fascinating. Let's pull out the one more boat here and then we'll answer some questions if you have them. All right, there's another boat. Oh, looks like we're sending out some Cordo cream. Every Shell Cordovan wallet that we ship gets an application of this product here from Saphir. This is Saphir Cordovan cream and it's a neutral finish. They sell different colors. I like the neutral a lot for a bunch of reasons, but perhaps the biggest one for, for you would be, you can use this on any color shell. So you don't have to worry about it. I don't really want to change the color too much of my stuff. So I like the natural anyways. This product will give you a really good luster, a nice bright, shiny sort of surface luster. Um, Venetian cream will also do that. This one I feel has like a little bit more wax in it, will, which will give you uh, just a bit brighter of a look. So I, we use this on everything. I strongly recommend it. Oh, here's one of those vault key holders I was mentioning. Here's a color eight shell vault key case. This is one of those ones that I toss in the drawer at home with like extra keys. It's just a nice way to keep things together. And here's another Capone. Oh, there's another black marbled one. Oh. Somebody called you Fat Herbie? That's not very nice. I'm sorry about that. But this is, um, you know, I was mentioning, we, we did do a small batch on these special pieces of black marbled and color eight marbled. I'm gonna repeat myself because I strongly encourage people to message me if you're interested in one of these because I can send you a photo. Like this one has crazy, I don't know what this is in the center. It's almost like a camo look that if you just order off the site, yours probably won't look like this, but I can send you photos of what we have available. And you might think this is amazing or you might think it's kind of weird, but either way we can pick out one that you like. So another one of these special small batches. And I think there's a couple of the black marble left. Um, let's answer that question right now. So <laughs> what's up, Austin? Moak14 says, could you do a video filling in the reverse interior with some Sephir sometime? You know, I did a video, take a look on my channel. I did a video called Reverse Shell Cordovan where I polish in the reverse side of a shell with a, um, a spoon and some water. You can find some good results with just a spoon and water. Um, you can glaze it in and fill in uh, pretty nicely with just like the backs of a spoon. Check that out. The video is one of our, uh, it's like surprising how many people have watched that video. It's called Reverse Shell Cordovan. And here's another cool one. I was talking a minute ago about the Black Dublin being the best black leather around. I think I'm gonna still stand by that, but it's probably tied with the black shell here. And especially the way that we've been treating our black shell recently. God, that's nice. It's super bright and shiny. And I've mentioned that I think this looks sort of futuristic, the way that the light hits it. For some reason, it, when I hold it like this, it reminds me of like the curves of how like a black BMW looks or something. I just think that is really, really neat. And then we've been doing a little bit of extra work that I find to improve the quality of these products. On the 100% shell stuff, we've been doing a bit of hand staining and burnishing on the edges. So this is all matching edge stain. So on the color eight shell foxes and the black shell foxes, we'll take the same dye that the tannery uses to stain the shell. And we will stain the edges with that same dye on all the little card slots, all the edges here and all the edges here. And then of course we have a nice little Horween ink stamp on the inside. That's pretty sweet. It's hard, really, really hard for us to get the leather for the insides of these wallets. So the color eight shell, we've been out of stock. It's going to be a, a cup, maybe a month or so before we can even have a couple left of those. And let me give you a comparison of the black shell and the black Dublin. You can see the Dublin is a little bit more um, slate. It's like slightly more gray and has much more grain character to it where the shell is just super, super smooth and shiny. All right, we got two, looks like two things left. What is this? Huh. 
Looks like somebody, uh, so like a little darker of a uh, English tan here. This looks like this one has a little bit of extra wax. So this might be a good comparison. All right, looks like somebody picked up a Model 1 Chicago comb, which I use this and the Model 8 at home. The Model 8 one's longer with like a big handle. If you haven't checked out Chicago comb, you should pick up a comb from them. They're inexpensive and made out of carbon fiber, so it'll last forever. But somebody picked up one of those combs with an English tan Dublin leather sheath. And this English tan Dublin, if you look at the sort of spine of it here or where I flex it, you can see these orange tones come out. That's the color that the tannery is matching uh, and not so much the surface. So if they put a little bit of extra wax on in certain spots, you get a bit of a darker surface color. And then somebody was asking about Derby. If you tumble this, it starts to break up the, the texture of the grain and it will look a little bit swirly kind of like this pull-up look, but sort of broken up and all over the place. That's the only difference between Dublin and Derby is the Derby is tumbled. But that's, I mean, I like a little bit of the lighter wax color like here on, on that English tan on the table. But if you want a dramatic pull-up, sometimes they're a little bit darker with extra wax. And the last Derby here, I guess we'll save my favorite for last. So this is matching my watch band I'm noticing. This is an English tan Dublin Fat Herbie. Fat Herbie is the wallet that sort of started the company 10 years ago. And I still love it. It's, uh, it's, it's really good for a couple of reasons. In the back slot here, you know, if you ever travel again, you'll be able to put all of the world's paper currency in the back there. If you have a passport, you can actually fit a passport in here in a pinch. I don't really suggest it. It sticks out a tiny bit, but sometimes I've found it handy just to put my passport in here also. And then the inside, we have this unique card layout with the two card slots on each side. They're not stacked on top of each other, uh, which is, you know, opposite of something like this, where you have all these stacked cards. Something like this, your cards are going to be taking up more height when you're stacking them on top. The Herbie, because you're spreading out those cards over more surface area, it just lays thinner in your back pocket and I wear my wallet in the back pocket so that's why I prefer Fat Herbie so this one in English and Dublin is also my favorite Dublin color right now I think it's my favorite non-shell leather at the moment it reminds me of my favorite shell color which is amaretto and then maybe that's why I like it but I just love the natural character in the Dublin so thanks for hanging in there during this uh, crazy audio um Let's flip the uh, flip the old camera around and try to answer any questions that you have. And uh, it's good to see all these. Uh, hey, Nataku. It's good to see all the friendly faces like Nataku, and uh, even Austin showed up. <laughs> What's up, guys? Hopefully, uh, this audio is not that bad. I think I need a separate audio device. Because right now, this microphone is plugged right into the camera. I think that's what's causing these problems. So I'm going to have to buy like a USB microphone or something. Um, so let's see who's been hanging out. So we got Nitaku, Moek, Herb, <laughs> Fat Herbie, Andrew, Austin, Mr. Chop Top. I'm glad you like your Fat Herbie. And Javier. Yeah. Well, thanks for checking us out, guys. I guess there's not too many questions, which is good. <laughs> I, I would prefer that there aren't any questions, but I know there's so much uh, knowledge about the leather in general, not just the horrorween stuff that people get confused on, uh, that I try, that's why I try to do some of these streams is because I think it's, understanding leather is like learning another language. And I'll, all I wanna do is share some of my experience through 15 years of working at a tannery with what I look for in the leather and try to describe uh, some of the characteristics I like and don't like so you can make a good choice with whatever you're buying. Um, and by the way, somebody was asking about the Derby leather. I'll clarify that one more time. This is English Chan Dublin. If you tumble any Dublin leather in a mill, it, it spins like a, a laundry dryer. You, t you will have the leather hit and break it itself up and it'll kind of get this like swirly look and it will make the grain um, more more broken up. So when people describe loose grain, 
it's kind of that same idea when you tumble the leather you're going to make it a little bit pebbly so that's the big difference between dublin and derby is just the tumbling dublin is more smooth of an appearance where the derby is more textured broken up um sapphire renovateur on reverse shell gives a bit of instant patina i bet that's true i used that product 12 years ago on some boots or something i had and i didn't really give it enough sh ch of a chance I, I think that was just sitting around at the tannery at the time and i thought it did a pretty nice job but i haven't tried it on reverse shell and otaku says if i want a key fob in the psychedelic shell should i email you or is that all accounted for i knew you said it was going to be private that's a good question um here's a psychedelic yeah psychedelic shell <laughs> whoa almost dropped it <laughs> so tomorrow amir and i are going to film and document making stuff out of these two shells i don't know what's going to come out of it but i would like to take any extra like remnants and I'd like to cut them into key fobs and put them up on site for like a dollar. I would do it for free, but our, in order to like ship stuff, we have to put in a real order. So I'll just put them up for a dollar and I'll give a advance warning of when that's gonna happen and you can get your hands on some. Hey Marco, what's up man? Marco's always here. Like a bowl of fruity pebbles. Um, Robert says, got your email this morning thanking me for my order. Wanted to say that level of customer service is really appreciated. I'm glad that you said that, Robert, and it feels like every time I do a live stream like that, somebody brings up those videos, and it's very encouraging because it's, it's time-consuming for me to do, but I think it's the most important thing I do is to uh, really let you know, like, we care, <laughs> and uh, I want to make sure that you've got a wallet or watch strap or belt or whatever I'm making for you that's gonna last you a long time. And I think having like a real face behind it sort of sets us apart from somewhere like Amazon. Like Amazon doesn't care about you. <laughs> so I'm trying to sort of maybe bring back this old world mentality where you would go to a store and buy stuff from like a person that you had a relationship with. Um, I'm trying to bring that back in sort of like a modern way with a video like this. I mean, we were doing this live. Um, trying to do stuff that you know amazon can't do or won't do i think it's pretty cool yeah nataku it, something like that you know we're gonna make we'll make enough money to pay for the shelves and pay for amir's time to make them but then like i look at something like a key fob on that as um i look at it as like a fun way to give back you know for you checking out these videos you know people that are into this stuff I really want everybody to experience it as much as possible. So that's why I would do something like that. See ya. Yeah, and like um, really the whole, like I just mentioned, the whole idea here is to share leather with more people. And if I can do that and you know pay my team, uh, I'm going to. So that's, that's kind of where I wash out is I just want to get more leather into more people's hands so you can check it out in person. It's, I get it. Like I didn't know that there was more than one type of leather in the world, you know, 15 years ago. And then once I realized that you could have an infinite amount in different colors, uh, it kind of blew my mind. And there are so, I mean, I'm just looking at the Horween stuff. There's so many that you'd never be able to experience them all. So I want to, you know, try to describe them and document them the best I can in videos like this. But if I can get an inexpensive way to like put that in your hand, that's where it really happens. It's, it's so much about the feel and the smell and the look. Like I can only capture so much of the look on a video like this. Um, but yeah. So sorry about the audio, guys. I, I'm going to, I promise you next time we do this, um, <laughs> What's up, AV Leather? I promise you the next time I do this, I'll have some sort of different setup that will hopefully uh, fix the crackly audio. I thought, I was, I swear to you, I was testing it for an hour before you know, I turned on the stream. Uh, and I was doing it on like private live streams and it was working great. So I don't understand 
technology, hey guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, what's up? And thanks again, AV Leather, for coming to hang out all the way from Romania. That's nuts, man. And Nataku, yeah, the rare, the those psychedelic shells, they're rare for one reason only. It's because that's the first time it's been done. And I asked Skip if he could make it again, and he just doesn't know. So it's hard to know if we're going to be able to reproduce that. And it's kind of like the marble shells where every shell is going to be a little, a little different. So it's a challenge to do sort of, it would be like, uh, if we painted like Jackson Pollock all day and we just had like random splatter paintings, all those are going to be totally different. And, you know, on the Capones that we're selling right now, each of these Capones are totally different. The texture is all randomized. So it's a unique challenge for us. And sometimes we'll ship something to somebody that they weren't expecting because it's so random. But, you know, I always try to make it right. So if you get something that you weren't expecting, I, number one, encourage people to email me first before you order and I can send you photos of what we have available and you can pick right from there. But then if you get it too, and it's not something you were into, don't worry about it. You know, I don't want you to spend your money on something you don't like. It needs to be a wallet or a watch strap or a belt that's going to last you the rest of your life. So, uh, love and learn, <laughs> live and learn. Well, thanks for hanging out guys. I'm going to ship, we're going to ship all these things out. Um, so I'm going to cut it off, and especially because the audio is not great. Sorry again. Um, but I appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, Nataku says, that's why I love it. So I'll pick up a key fob, even though I have a raw shell fob that's aging beautifully. That raw shell is pretty special. Yeah, the, the plan for the private stock is, I'm not sure what day it will be. I'm looking at about two weeks. We're going to do the same concept that it did before, where we... Um, you know, right now we're making the private stock and tomorrow we'll make the psychedelic shells. But I liked the idea where on the irregulars that I did recently, the day before we did a live stream like this and sort of showed you everything that's going to be available tomorrow. We're going to do that same thing for the private stock. So you'll get advance notice and a time when they go live. So you don't have to shop and like hustle to buy something. I, I want everybody to sort of have an equal chance to get whatever they're interested in and have enough time to look at the things in advance. So we'll do that and I'll include, you know, if we can get any key fobs out of there, I'll include those key fobs uh, for, for a dollar in there. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you're able to pick up some stuff. I know I've been having a lot of people interested in the psychedelic shell, like a lot of emails. So I know, you might have to pull the trigger kind of quick on that. <laughs> but anyways, uh, appreciate you guys sticking through this crazy audio. I'm going to get that fixed. Until next time, hope you have a good one. And now I have to figure out how to turn this.